What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video of Kapakoto One. So today we're going to continue on with our job interview questions, uh, primarily the array job questions. Uh, we have another coding example that we're going to go through and essentially utterly memorize so that we have more tools within our toolbox. So today for a rare pair, array pair sum, excuse me, that's what we're going to be dealing with. So again, for arrays, you could have list tuples of dictionaries. Uh, those are all different kinds of arrays we're going to be utilizing, but this is going to be array pair sum. So given an integer array, so say we have an array of 1322, two, which you can see down here that I've already defined in pair sum. Given an array, an integer array, 1322, two, I'll put all the unique pairs, the pairs of these of these integers, that can sum up to a specific value of k. So that can sum up to a specific specific value of 4. So our input, we're going to make a function called pair sum. We're going to pass to argument 1, which is going to be the array, and then argument 2, which is going to be the value of k, or some kind of specific sum that we want these to see if we have any pairs that add up to. So in this case, if we ran this, if we have our function done properly, it should return two different pairs, 1, 3, and 2, 2. Because 1, 3 adds, adds up to 4, 2, 2 adds up to 4. And uh, 1, 3, and 2, 2 are integer pairs that were within the array that we're passing through. So... Let's get coding. First off, we need to define our function. And like I said, we're passing through it an array and a value of k. That's gonna be our first piece there. Now, before we even get into anything, we wanna make sure we have some way to troubleshoot this so we don't get errors. What if our array only had one value in it, one integer, one element? Well, then that's gonna be a really crappy array and we don't wanna go any further. So first off the bat, we can say, if the length of the array that we're gonna be passing is less than two. Well, what do we want it to do if it's less than two? Hell, just return, let's do a print function and say too small, so we know. So that's how we can take care of that if the length of the array is gonna to be too tiny to begin with. Now, something I wanna do, cause I already know how I'm gonna code this. Um, we wanna have a way, almost like counters, we wanna have a way of counting exactly, uh, keeping track of what we see in terms of our array pairs and also outputs of our different array pairs. So we're just gonna create two different empty variables that are gonna sit in memory and they're gonna get filled as we go through, in this case, a for loop. So we wanna go through, we wanna use a for loop to go through each of the elements within our array and somehow compare it to our target to see if it's gonna be a match. So for each target and number, we're gonna get, no, get an output and that output might be a good, that number target might be a very good match for our number of, um, for our specific value in this case, which is K. So with that being said, let's just run through it. It'll make sense, more sense to as we go through it and then as we debug it, of course. So for the number in the array that we're gonna be going through, what do we wanna do for each number in the array? Well, I wanna compare it to another variable I'm gonna create called target. Target's going to equal K minus the number that we're gonna be going through in the for loop. So for a number in array, target equals K minus number. So what does this mean? If we if, uh, if if we go through the beginning of the array, it's gonna first go through the number one, and K is always gonna be four in this example. So four minus the num, four minus one is going to be three. So in this case, when the target variable is created in memory, it's gonna fit that with the number three when it does that in, in memory. So what do we wanna do with that uh, if that's gonna be the case? Well. If the target is not seen, I want to somehow take that that target that I get. In this case, it's going to be four minus one, it's going to be three. If that target is not seen, what do I want to do? So, if the target that we're that we're computing is not in scene, and scene is the variable that we have created above, we're going to want to take that scene and add the number to it. So again, the number is going to be this portion here. We want to add the number that we just uh, computed that target with, and this will make sense because again, we're doing it in pairs. So this is four minus one, and we're gonna get a target of three. So we care about the three and we care about the one because we already know now that that's gonna be a pair that's gonna equal up to our ultimate value of K. So now as we're starting to adjudicate this list, we're saying, all right, if it's if the target's not in the scene, add it to scene. What else, and what do we do in Python? We said we wanna put an else statement in to say, you know, if it is in scene, what do I want it to do? Well, if I know that the, if the, if the number that we're utilizing to create the target is already in scene. Well, then I know I have a combination now of target and scene. I'm sorry, target and number that are going to uh, combine together as a pair to make the value of K. What the hell does that mean? Meaning, in this example, we'll do four and one again. So four minus one equals three. So now going through this next line here, if target, if three is not in scene, well, scene is empty at this point, 
add the number, add the number one. So then we're, we should get uh, the number one to pop up here. But then what's gonna happen is the next time I go through, I go through this piece here, it's gonna say the next loop, it's gonna say four num and array. Well, it's gonna be then four and then three. Three is gonna be the next number in the array. Target equals four minus three. Target's now gonna equal one. If target not in scene, well, we just know in the last for loop, we have a number one in here, so it is seen. So what do I want it to do? Well, so now I have a combination of one and three. I'm sorry, this is gonna be three at that point. So I'm gonna have a one in scene and I'm gonna have a three in num. So what do I, I wanna create that pair, that one, three pair that's gonna equal four. So what are we gonna do with our else loop? We wanna, we wanna now start to adjudicate our output. And this is how we're gonna, this is how we're gonna do So we're gonna take our output, our empty variable output, and we wanna add to it. What do we wanna add? We wanna add the minimum of what? Well, of number or the target. So in this case, so the first one is four minus one, and it was gonna be three. And that was, and then the next time we had th uh, four minus three is gonna be one. So we want the minimum of that number target combination. So the minimum, the second time it runs through, and this will make more sense if we go through the minimum when we do this, it's going to be, this will be three, and this will be one. So the minimum between three and one is one. So it's gonna, it should print to one first. And then I'm going to then, whoops, Daisy. Then we want to do the maximum of the same thing, of that same combination. Get rid of that out of the way. So now what I wanted to do is say, begin again, between one and three, now give me the maximum of that number. Let's see if our, quote, our parentheses match up. Yes, yes, and we're in the add method, wonderful. So again, as we, as we um, go through this in the, the, the debugger, it'll be a lot cleaner for you. And then as we're going through this, I want to do one more piece in this for loop which is then we want to give an output, right? So I'm just going to put, just for the sake of cleanliness, have a new line, and to that we're going to join. I want to join something. This will make sense to you again as we go through the debugger. I want a map, and through that map I want to create a string, and I want that list to be from the output that we created, which again is going to be this. Right now it's just an empty set, but it's, I want it to print out that output, and that's what we're adjudicating here in this else statement. So as I go through, just want to check my parentheses. Good, 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 sweet. All right, so now in order to make any of this even do anything, uh, after we printed out a tuple answer, we're going to see if we have the right answer. We're going to first have to call this function in, into place uh, first off. So how do we do that? Well, I'm just going to put pass through, call our function, pass through the, the, the function here, pair sum. So we're calling the function we created. I need to first put an array, and we said we were doing... What do we say we're doing? One, three, two, and two. That's our array. And then I have to also give it a K value. In this case, we're doing four. So let us boop, 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 pop it in and run the debug. We're doing pair sums. That's what we're going to run here. And I can do console, but I, we don't even need this right now, but it's going to keep popping up, I believe. So start off in the beginning. Let's FA through there. So first off, again, remember for functions, whenever you're running through a function uh, in the debugger or even in Python code, it's not going to run the function until you call it. So that's why it jumps from line 13 where I started all the way down to line 31, because now it's calling the function pair sum and it's checking, do you have two arguments? Otherwise, we'd get an argument error. It'd say, you know, you're trying to pass two and wants three or... Or, or, or vice versa. So pair sum, we're giving it two arguments. We can see in our function, it wants two arguments. So we're gonna get to the next line. So in memory, we have an array, which is a list, and it's one, three, two, two, and then we have our k, which is equaling four. So now we are good, we can start to run through the code. So if the length of the array is less than two, it's not our array has four elements in it, if the index is zero to three, so that's going to be a false. So since it's false, it's not gonna finish that loop. It's gonna jump out of that loop and go to the next line of executable code, which in this case now we're at scene. So scene is gonna be a variable, it's an empty variable, just gonna create set. So in memory, we're gonna see the uh, variable scene created and it's gonna have an empty set. Same thing for output, nothing special there. So we can see in memory what we're creating now on the computer. Now, first for loop, for the number in the array. So for the first number in the array, it's number one. So it's gonna give me num equals one. Target equals k minus, nine, uh, minus num. So that means target is another variable we created and it's gonna equal four minus one, which is gonna give me three. So now it's gonna say target's gonna equal three. Now this is where I want you to pay attention. So if the target is not in scene, so we can look at scene right now, scene is an empty set up top here. If the target is not in scene, well target is three, it's not in scene, I want you to add the number. And the number right now in memory is one. So since three is not up in here, add the number. So we're gonna F8 through there. And sure enough, in scene, now we have a one. 
And now we can go to the next number in the array because we're still within this loop here. So four number in array. So now the number is three in the, the next number in the array, which is correct. Now we're gonna have target equals K minus num or four minus three. So now our target is gonna change with the memory and sure enough it did. Now watch what happens here. If target not in scene, target is one. Is target not in scene? That would be false. It is in scene. So we're not gonna add it. We don't wanna add it one, one again. It's not gonna make any sense. We already have one within the scene. So that means this is gonna be false and it's gonna jump to the next executable line of code. So it had better go down to line 27. And sure enough, it does, because now we're in our else statement, because that if statement was false. So it's gotta go to the next executable line of code. We have to keep going until we hit a true. So now this is going to be, th this else statement is simply adjudicating the output set that we have up here at empty set. So we're saying in output, I want you to add. I want you to add the minimum of the number or the target. Or right now, the number is three and the target is one. So the lowest of that, the minimum is gonna be one. So the first element here in this tuple is gonna be one. And then for the second element, I want you to give me the maximum that is of the number or the target. Number is three, target's one, maximum is three. So now this tuple had better print out a one and a three if we coded properly. So I'm gonna F8 through there. So now in our output, sure enough, we have a one and a three. Good, so within this dictionary now, we have a one, three, tuple. Sweet, I like it. Now uh, we still have more numbers in the array to go through. So now we're gonna F8 through there and the number's gonna change to two. So now we're gonna have four minus two, it's gonna equal two. Now if target not in scene, target is two, it is not in scene. So it had better go to the next line 24 and add it. And sure enough, it does, wonderful. So now we have one comma two within the scene. The next number that's in our array is the number two again. So that's gonna stay two. Like all good math, target's gonna stay two. If target not in scene, well, target is two right now, and it is in the scene, so this is gonna be false. So we have better jump to our else statement, and sure enough, we do. Same thing now, output. Right now, output has a one comma three tuple, and we wanna add to it the minimum of the number target. Well, the minimum of our number target in memory right now is a two, and the maximum of our number target in memory right now is also two. So we have better get a two two show up in memory. And sure enough, we get a two, two. And we can kind of see our code is working because one, three is four, two, two is four. So this, it should be, right? I mean, it makes sense. We're doing the math right here in this for loop. So now we run through all the numbers in our array. So when I F8 through this for loop here, it's gonna leave. And sure enough, it did, it left the for loop. Why? Because there were no more numbers in the array. We were done. Next executable line of code outside the for loop is this print statement. And that's where we have print is equaling one, a new line. And we want to join. And by that joining, we're going to map, we're going to create a string of our list of outputs. So right now we have two outputs and that new line is just going to mean that it's going to take one, three and on a new line, it'll put two, two. Again, if I did this properly. So I'm going to F8 through there. Everything's out of memory. And I just want to see if it actually did it right. Hey, there we go. Awesome. So I'm in the console now. So this was the... Let me bring this up and let me go down here so we can see it. So this is the printing out at the end in here in the console. We printed out, I wanted a new line and I wanted to join and then map creating a string of the list. So we have a tuple of one, three and a tuple of two, two. And it got those from the output, doot, 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 from the output variable that we created. Right now it's empty, memory's done because the code is done, but you saw the output was growing uh, every, every time we got through this else statement within the code, that output was growing. Um, so this is a good opportunity. You can look up join method. You can look up the map method if you need to. Uh, play with this. Change your pair sums. Um, get to uh, add another number and see what happens as you run through your code. Try to break it and then debug through it and see where it's going wrong and maybe what other tests you might need to put into the code to make it executable. Um, I highly recommend memorizing uh, this this aspect of code, um, again, as another aspect of the array job interview questions for um, algorithms, for array algorithms. Uh, not, I mean, not a, array specific, but we're using it for this example. With that said, guys, have an excellent day, and I will see you next time at Cup of Code 01.